Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And good evening. It is Monday night, it is 9 o'clock, and it is time for 10-Year Tip with, uh, with me, Gary Dibley, and the ever-capable modding master that is a mark. Um, a lot happened today, I'm telling you. Uh, it really went um, wonky donkey a few seconds ago. Um, come home from work, uh, turn everything on to test it, as you do, um, and uh, straight away the, uh, the, the router packed up. Um, no power to the router whatsoever. Um, so after a lot of faffing and messing around, managed to find out that the wife had unplugged the damn thing. Um, should have been the first thing you'd check as a man, um, but it wasn't. I, I blamed everything else first, um, and then blamed the wife, um, because she did deserve it. Um, and she is in bed and, and sleeping it off. <laughs> she's, she's not, I, I didn't say that. It, if you're watching from SO15, I never said that at all. She's fine. Um, but yeah, and then, then I set everything else up, and, and I stuck the, uh, the, the webcam in, as you would do, um, and the damn thing went pop. Um, so I had to rush out to, uh, to PC World to buy a new webcam. Hence, hopefully, a bit better quality tonight. Um, I've, I've tried to, uh, to sort of get a better quality camera. We're on the new server now and, uh, and hopefully, hopefully the, the shed's looking a, a bit brighter. Um, and we've, we've played as well, because whilst looking for a replacement, I found my old webcam um, and, and we've done this. We have a, uh, if you like, a bench cam, um, which we did have before, uh, sort of. But um, that shows you the state that I am in at in the particular mod that we are making now. Um, that is where we got to, and you guys will, will probably uh, probably see that that what we've been doing there is actually butchering the wood. Now, it doesn't look that bad, um, and I was quite surprised myself to be honest um, I did actually go out and buy um, some decent tooling um, I, I looked at all the comments um, that, that you guys left on on the Facebook and on, on the forum and things like that and I know you said don't do it but unfortunately I, I took that as a little bit of a challenge um, and while we're on the subject of, of the feedback you you know you, you've given us um, on, on the Facebook and the shares and the likes this that, and the other brilliant stuff keep it up so uh, don't forget to TSL, which is, I think, I don't know, someone, it's tweety, sherry, likey things. Um, if you see us pop up anywhere, please share all you can. Um, I'm going to pop in to my first little video now. Now, I must say, all the way through, um, I started this on Saturday, and uh, I, was, I was twitching ever so slightly all the way through this. Um, the tools arrived, and, and it was commitment time. And I had to get down and, and dirty with the uh, with uh, I, well, I didn't get down and dirty with the box, but I, I had to uh, to take it in my hands and uh, and do something with it. That's no better, is it? Um, anyway, I think I better go on with the vid. Here's the first one. Right. Well, I've got me uh, me bit on the uh, on the bench um, under the Dremel. I've been out and got a uh, a new little sort of cutting disc blade today. Um, and uh, I've got this at a certain level um, that I should be able to start working some of this wood out, hopefully. Um, very gently, hopefully this is, is going to work. So I'm just going to fire up the, uh, fire up the uh, drill and uh, get it right. It may be a bit noisy, so you might want to uh, put your fingers in your ears. <laughs>
could probably spot my deliberate mistake there, which was this um, spindle <laughs> going up inside the wood. Uh, yeah, damn thing. <laughs> but my uh, my little spindle was was disappearing up inside the wood. <laughs> it needs a little little tighten. Stop there. Let's try that again. As you can see, that is starting to uh, to route out very nicely. I'm going to go away. I need to uh, I need to work with this a bit more um, to take it down and out as much as I need. But I think that is going to be doing quite a reasonable job of getting where I need to be. So uh, I'm going to cut away and I'll come back once I've got it down to the level I need it. Right, so as you can see, I've managed to uh, to to route out um, my box down in there. So now my DNA board um, will actually fit in there perfectly where I want it to go. I've got a thought on on how I'm going to be looking uh, at this particular box. I've got some uh, some wood here. Um, potentially I'm looking at now making a, a little inlay that's going to sit over the top of um, of all of this switch housing. So I may build up a, uh, a bit of wood here and make a top cap. And within this top cap here have the uh, DNA display internally with a little peephole through the top there and uh, my couple of push buttons in here. Um, recess down enough so that I'll be able to get my, my lid on still. So my next stage is, is going to be to sort of cut a piece of this to size in there um, just to, uh, to sort of shape it all up and uh, get it to, to fit in with this lot. Then I can start mounting my bits up on the back of here and it should be a case of a couple of solders and yeah, something down there and you, you get the picture. But um, I'm going to go away and I'm going to cut this up uh, and I'll, I'll come back when I'm, uh, when I'm starting to shape that little bit of wood uh, for the window. Come back in two. Oh, I left off last week, just finished off epoxying this in. Now nicely, long well, truly solid. Next we'll be to put the circuit board in. But before I do that, I need to attach the atomizer connector in because I really want to attach the wires to the two ends of this before I seal it in the case so otherwise it could be quite awkward to get the wires in the holes so I'll just be popping that through there but what I'm going to do is seal it in place with some of the epoxy putty because it's you're dealing with thin metal here there's nothing really to hold the atomizer connector in place so I want to build up a bit of epoxy around it so that it gives a nice firm hold so whatever you put on the end is not going to go anywhere so I'm going to start off at least with half that I've got left so I'm just cutting off a chunk Next 
forget that. As always, don't forget protection if you're not sure about your skin. together till it's nice and even. And this particular one's about at the last part of its life. It's starting to get a bit hard. But it'll do for this piece. So good mix together and nice even colour. And let's start half of it inside the actual case below where the atomizer connector is going to go. So, so it's somewhere like that. down with a bit of pressure trying to get as tight as possible around that. And at the same time try and make sure that your connector is nice and straight. So I'm going to stand it like that, let it dry and be back once it has. Okay, so thinking about it, I think I'm going to use up the rest of this epoxy and add a bit more around this to make it just to make absolutely certain that it's a very good strong connection and this epoxy really needs used up anyway so let's now build this up sure I'll leave an area of clear metal just in case I have to redo any connections on it. I've got some I can still solder to. Um, once again I'm just checking that it's reasonably straight on. There we go. It's definitely good for now. So it's had a good time to set now and we're ready to attach the board. Um, start off with this side. I'm going to use the connectors that's on rather than the solder points. Just gets easier. So I'll just pop in each one. Have to unscrew it of course. Make sure you get the right wire in each hole. Get the other wires one out of the way. Positive negative on, not just the atomizer ones. And once you've got these in, you could test the circuit, make sure everything's working okay before you glue it on in place. But Word of warning, if you're going to do that, 
make sure that you keep this board well away from any of the metal because if it touches the base you're going to short out and maybe just break something. So be very careful, especially when you go to put the batteries in. So that's all the wires in position. And there we go, we're back in the room once again. And and that little first section went a damn sight quicker than I thought. I didn't I didn't realise at the time just how much I was uh, I was um shaking while I was doing that. And I think I've I've watched some of these videos back myself, um and yeah, it becomes apparent all the way through um just how careful I was I was being with uh, with my DNA um board. Um I know I've, I've just looked at, uh, I, I've had a quick glance up at chat and somebody did mention that the, the mod that Mark is working on, um, that is a little board that, that I got, I've got a few of them um, from, from eBay, sent one over to Mark to have a look at and somebody said about the amp limit on that board. Now I believe that the amp limit on that board is around about uh, two-ish amps. Um, However, if you fit a heat sink uh, to the board, it takes up to three. Now I've found on those particular boards that Mark's working on, you know, w without the heat sink, uh, it is very, very acceptable right the way. You know, y you, it's you'd be hard pushed to uh, to exceed that two amp limit, I think. And and if you watch the rest through, you will find that becomes apparent when Mark does a, a very good test on a on a dual call Carto when he when he finishes, and that is one of the best ways to test one of the you know one of the limitations of a sort of board of that type. Um, I am going to pop into our first little wide break now. And apologies for keep looking down, um, but I have to because my notes are down there and they're not up there. Um, I'll be back after this. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. in Yorkshire for your EC needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk Pro sponsors of VeberTrails.tv Liberty Flights sponsors 10-year tip with Gary Dibley. And welcome back. It would also appear I'm having one of those days, I think, today, because um, during the ad break, the, the main light that the, the is on me, um, the bulb blew again. Um, so in one minute and 30 seconds, I just had to leg it to the house, um, grab a new bulb, come back, take out the hot bulb and put in a new one. Um, so if I look slightly brighter or dimmer than I did before, I do apologise. I don't think I could look dimmer than I did before. Um, you never know. I'm knackered now. All this, I've done nothing but run around today. It is getting silly. Um, I don't know what else, the shed might collapse in the next half. Uh, right, on with my little bit of, uh, of wood modding, um, which, yeah, um, um, touch wood. Sorry about that, if I banged the bench, it took your eardrums out. Um, yeah, touch wood seems to, be, uh, seems to be working out quite nicely. Um, see you back after these little vids. I thought I'd get it back down on the bench before we uh, we do much else because 
what I'm going to have to do um, down in here is obviously take these, uh, let me just go down so you can see what we're looking at. I've got to take the uh, the wires off because obviously in, in the way this is rigged up at the moment we've got a, a wire going from our POS terminal and our battery um, down to the switch and then that is, is going back out to the uh, to the ATI connector. So what we're going to have to do is, is uh, relieve these wires up because obviously as, as you remember from last week the DNA has a um, like a dedicated switched output. So realistically, what I need to do is is uh, remove um, the uh, if you like the switch wires and bits and pieces. It may well mean that then I can actually um, come back down on here. Ouch! That was warm. It may well mean that I can come back down at some point. Now this is going to be a pain in the bum. I'm going to get this out of the centre pin. There's my centre pin wire off. Um, and I've got to take this one off here, which, which goes from the outside of the ATI connection up to the uh, to the, the spring there. Um, purely because we're not going to be using these. Um, we will be we will obviously have a, a pos and a neg on here, but we won't have them in, in this type of a, a setup. We'll be taking our pos and our neg straight up to the um, to the DNA board. So I'm going to have to do a bit of jiggery pokery with these as well. Come on, little bugger. There you go. Oh, you didn't see any of that. Um, but yeah, I've just taken off my the two wires there. What I'm going to have to do is take uh, this wire off this bit here as well because as I say I will be going straight onto my my board with that. So I'll keep the existing POS wire. What I might do is just run a new groove um, just down in the corner there so it pops straight through here um, and then onto the board. Um, and then obviously I'm going to have my neg coming through here to the neg of the board. Um, two switch terminals up and uh, away we go. So I'm just going to have to cut a little groove down in, down in here for this to seat down in. Um, and then what I need to do, as I mentioned earlier, is I'm looking at making a, uh, a little insert, a wooden insert, that will sit down sort of flush on the top there. So I need to go away and cut this out. This is going to be fiddly bugger um, and then really it should be a case of uh, cutting out the hole for the board to go in or, or to see the display through because um, I'm looking at having a couple of switches down inside here um, that I can I can adjust my voltage see my oh, wattage and see my display on the top here pop the lid on and it'd be a nice little uh, stealthy DNA mod I like the idea of that um, but I'll come back very shortly after this Right, well I'm just, uh, I'll see if I can go down and show you what I'm doing here. I've done um, a little a little insert for the top. Um, I've got to narrow out this bit here um, so it goes over the, the screw thread. And at the moment I'm just trying to <laughs> nibble out the bit for the display. That will sort of sit over the top of there so you sort of get an idea of, of where I'm hoping my display is going to go with a couple of buttons underneath. Um, it's been a bugger to cut and I'm just nibbling this out ever so slightly now. Um, I've got it on a real low setting. I've got a real, uh, I'll say steady eye, but I haven't got a bleeding steady eye. But I'm just going to nibble out a tiny bit more. I think I'm nearly there. It's on a real low setting on the Dremel. I'm just teasing. Yes, he sounds like he knows what he's doing, but he doesn't. This out, buddy. That stuff's uh, is all new to me. This stuff.
so hopefully I've got me oh which isn't exactly well it's alright it's levelish um, now I'm going to be careful with it see if I can get this let me just come down on the bench a little bit now I've still got me my DNA board here with me display on there and I'm sort of thinking that let me just pop a battery in get a display up that it should sit something like that behind there now it does all get in I just have to uh, mess it about a bit but that's sort of where me I want me display to go what I'm going to have to do now is um, A, be very careful with that display um, and B, I'm, I'm just going to change up I've got a very small uh, routing bit on there I'm just now going to uh, pop this back in again and now around the outside of uh, here with a, with a bigger um, he's, he's making the right pigs here as soon as the power tools come out filming goes to pop so you can see I've, I've already routed that down to a certain depth I've got this bigger router now and what I'm going to do is literally just run this over the top and around the inside of this insert so my display can get a little bit deeper in, into, uh, into that wood um, then what I'm going to do, I've got a real couple tiny little um, push switches that I'm going to mount up behind under the display um, so then everything is going to be assembled in the box and uh, we'll go from there but I'm going to go, I'm going to change this tip now, I'm going to route this down, I'm going to try and get the uh, the little push switches relatively mount, you know, mounted up in there if I can. Um, but yeah, essentially that is going to be my top cap that I can stain or, or whatever. Um, with me, this is the plan you see, the plan is, is sort of coming together, he thinks. Um, and then that will sort of mount inside there. And then I've got my battery in. He's saying, showing. It's sort of be like that. So all my DNA will be concealed under there. And my lid can go back on as it would do. And it's like a little stealthy. Uh, you wouldn't even know there's uh, anything special in there. But I think this is coming on quite nicely. I'm quite pleased with uh, how that's working. Um, my routing skills are. Uh, are actually working today. Um, yeah, he thinks. It may look absolutely terrible on the screen to you guys, but um, you can get the picture of where I'm going with that. Uh, I'll go away, I'll pop back in two with a bit more flimmer. I'm not actually going to test it myself because I'm pretty confident I'm going to be okay. I just need the epoxy to go with it. So. Once again, just quickly mix up a batch of epoxy. Easier to scrape it down and directly into where you want to be rather than trying to spread it out using a spatula or whatever. The main thing I want to watch for here is to make sure that all of the metal base is covered with the epoxy. chance of it shorting out. Pop that down there. That 
Wraps it around about where I want it. So I'll just leave that to set. I'll be back when I come to do the next part. So I've given it a few minutes to set off. And I'm just going to run a quick test. See if everything is working okay. I guess this is the part that causes the nervous part. Install the switch rather than the jumper. So. Take the batteries out first. Just to be on the safe side. So. Pop the jumper off, and this will just slot on the top. Out there, I think. So then we just need to set this in some epoxy again. And at the same time, I'm add a bit of epoxy to some of these wires just to keep them all in place. over these so once you've opened them and you put the lid back on it's an idea to keep them stood upright because they can leak if you leave them lying flat as I know at my cost. So just a quick tip for you. Just a quick mix together. getting anything over the components on the circuit board. quickly with this stuff because it's already starting to set up. And then I'll just mount that something like that and hold it in place. Well I need to clean off this before I do otherwise it'll be stuck in. If you're gonna be working with any kind of epoxy Keep a damp cloth handy because that stuff gets everywhere. And I'll be back when I've held this for a while. And there we go, we are back in the room once again. Um, I must say, chat is behaving itself tonight, um, sort of. Uh, yes, but Mark is doing uh, a fantastic job with that board. Um, I've got a few of those. I do want to have a play with one um, very shortly. Um, 
not too sure what to put it in though. They are very, very large boards and uh, it was it was uh, a nice opportune moment, shall we say, that Mark happened to visit the pound shop to uh, to get that big um, tin. Um, they do fit very nicely in a two ounce tin as Mark is showing you. I'm gonna slip now into um, our second air break. I'll be back very shortly after this. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And yes, we are back. Um, and no, uh, I, I just picked up something on, on, on the team chat where <laughs> Dave said, Is this the point where I nip out to pay the electricity bill? I made sure I put the 10p in the meter before I started. I can assure you. Of that. But I don't think anything else could go wrong today um, that hasn't already, um, apart from a hurricane knocking the shed over and you seeing everything below the grey t-shirt, which wouldn't be nice, I can assure you of that. Um, I'm going to pop straight into our next little set of videos where um, I test my routing skills a little bit more and I can say I, I actually did, um, in anticipation of doing this mod, I, I went and saw somebody who is very good at uh, working with wood. Uh, and she told me um, it's all about holding it steady, getting the bit in the right place and giving it a nice firm action when you drill down. Um, I'm gonna pop back with the bits. So I've been routing away at me little uh, me little top cap. Um, obviously it's, uh, you don't wanna be uh, watching that, it gets a bit boring. Um, so my, this is, like wafer thin now. It's it's like seriously, seriously thin. I've I've had to go down with this. Um, but I've got these little uh, micro switches that I'm going to insert under the display. And we've got those now, so they just pop through, so that you can you can press them. So I've got two going under there, and I think um, I don't want to mess around with this display too much. Uh, but let me just um, pop the battery in my little test rig here and bring up the um, display. But that is oh, cock. roughly where my display is going to sit in there, somewhere like so. Give me two buttons underneath. So, as you can see, I'm getting there, getting there slowly. Um, but I think that's going to look pretty funky. I'm being so bloody careful with this thing. If I pull it off, I'm going to have the right ump. Um, but yeah, that now is. I oh know we've been gone over and over and over and over this now. But uh, let me just give you an idea again where we're up to. So obviously, this is going to be for 18650 um, in the box. I'm just positioning my top cap up. Bear me one second. Um, now what I've got to do is go away, I've got to cut, so I'm at that stage now, so I've got my two holes in there and my display hole, 
um, it'll all sit flush with the box so I can get my lid back on. Um, these two little buttons are going to be so far down they're not going to interrupt the lid going back on. Um, that's one thing I've, I've tried to do, had to recess those sort of down inside. Um, yeah, tempting fate and touching wood. Um, for once, my wood seems to be behaving itself. <laughs> um, and these these new little bits that I've got, um, let me just whiz down and show these. They're, they're little Dremel bits, and they're like a, a, essentially a router bit. Um, that's the smallest one, uh, and I've got a bigger size one. But they are brilliant for uh, I've found for Halloween boxes. So um, any of you guys, you know, that work on wood, these are fantastic little things. New discovery for me. Never knew it could be so easy. Um, so yeah, let me pop away. Um, it's a lot of popping away today, but pop away. Um, I need a cup of tea. This stress is getting to me. Um, yeah, might have a cup of tea. Then I'm going to build a little wood insert to go down there so that it all rests on. Uh, I'm going to probably get that um, epoxy in, um, run uh, some of me some of me wires in. Um, I'll come back to you when we're when we're running those in. Um, but essentially, we're 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 looking we're looking good. I think it's it's what I wanted. I wanted to get the uh, the DNA in this box, um, and thus far, it is looking rather possible. Um, pop back in two. Here we have the completed unit. All that's left now is to test it out. So, pop off the lid. And when you press the button, there's the voltage output. Press the button again, that's the fully loaded batteries. So all good there. And of course, on off for the display. Working nicely. So, what I'm going to test it with is one of these low resistance dual coil atomizers. Because I find if anything is going to test out a, a variable voltage unit. This is about the best thing. So, let's read and do this right way. So, pop the probes onto the output. have 4.6 on both displays unloaded so screw your atomizer back in place and Register of 4.55. From the space ground, 4.7 to compensate. So that is pretty good on a dual coil. A drop of 0 0.05 volts. So I'd say we're doing pretty well. The circuit seems to hold up rather nicely. And now for a quick bit about what meters. So. You have your two leads, positive and negative, and the negative will always go to the common. And the red positive will either, depending on what you're doing, will go to the 10 amp DC or the voltage or milliamp. And for most of what we do, it'll be the voltage one. We'll probably never have to move them from there for any of the sort of electrical work we're doing. So your probes, self-explanatory. And then you've, on most of these you've got a dial where under voltage you've got the different ranges 600, 200, 22 etc. Uh, so you want something close to what you're expecting. So in this case 
We're somewhere in the four or five volt block, so 20 is what I'd select. And that'll give you the reading. The next, you've got your row image for testing coils or what have you. Again, you want the smallest setting closest to what you're using. In this case, that's a 200 ohm one. That's as low down as this one will go. So that's what I'd use because we're only dealing with one to um, ohm coils. And on this one, it's got a continuity tester, which is what you use to test whether a circuit's whole or not, or if there's a short on a switch, say. And if there's a complete circuit, you get a beep. If there's not a complete circuit, you'll hear nothing. So that's a good way to test quickly without having to look at the meter as well. And then there's other high voltage and capacitance things, which you probably won't use for anything that we do. That's pretty much the basics for a meter. So it's just a matter of popping your probes across whatever you want to test and having a look. So if it's a battery, one on each end, then you'll get a reading on the battery. If you're testing a switch, you put it either side of the switch on the continuity tester. And then if you get a beep, you know that the switch is closed. If there's not a beep, the switch is open. And if you don't get what you're expecting, there's a foot. And then checking the ohms on something. You put the positive pin on one side, the negative pin on the other. It doesn't really matter which way around you put them for. Checking resistance. Of course, it helps if you select the right one. Oh, and that is reading. Three ohms. Very strange. Okay, so it's difficult getting a good contact. That's always a good idea to let it settle. Uh, probably 2.9, and you have to take into account the resistance in the leads. So if you put the two together, it'll tell you what that is. And it looks like I've got a flat battery because that is way too high for what I've got here. But never mind. Whatever you get on the reading when you put them together, you take that off the homage reading of the device and that'll give you the homage of the coil. But it looks like I need a new battery. Which is often indicated by getting weird results. Of course, the other thing you need to check for, which I didn't, is make sure that your probes are clean. There's anything on there is going to throw off any results. So, testing that, I've got resistance of 0.8 in the wires. Then, when I pop it onto the cartomizer, you get a reading of 2.3. So, 2.3 minus 0.8 is 1.5 exactly what this should be. So, there you go. Live in them. Right, so I'm finally happy with my little inserty bit that I've done. Um, that I do believe is going to work a treat. Now, the next stage for me is, is going to be, I'm going to get all my, uh, if you like, all my wires in place on, on the actual, um, in the box back in the box where they need to go. Sorry about the thing. Um, so I'm just going to start tinning and soldering up bits in there. I've got my, uh, my power lead obviously coming off my pause battery there. Um, I'm just going to start popping in some of the, the wires that I'm going to be using for um, for my switch, for example, so I'll have a positive there coming off me, my fire button. 
which will be wired through to my fire button on the uh, on the board. I've got to put a neg back on the uh, back on the spring up here. Uh, obviously, to take my negative feed up to my DNA board. So I say DNA board again, shall I? So I'm just going to run this straight off the top where it was before. It's difficult doing this upside down, I'm telling you. He's all over the place. So there's my neg feed that will go up to my board. I better check my lid still closes. It should do. And I've got to take a pause and a neg now off my uh, off to me atomizer connection. I'm going to need another bit of wire for that because obviously, whereas before these are all linked up in in a certain way, um, you know we've got to because we're feeding the board each each bit goes to a separate bit on the board rather than um, linking them all together as we would do normally. So, excuse me, I'm fiddling when I should be doing. I've decided as well I'm going to permanently fix my, my display. Um, so I'm going to have to hold this up like this so I can see what the hell I'm doing. All you're getting is my bottom of my box. But I am uh, soldering down in there on the, uh, on the pause pin of the Etsy connection. I've decided I'm, I'm going to permanently fix it. And I'll show you exactly how I'm going to do that in a tick. So there's my pos pin on, and I need my neg out from my ATI connection as well. Now the one thing I will do before I go any further is test I've got no shorts in the box, test everything's working, and la 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 la. This is one of those mods where I normally I would normally sort of get halfway through. And, uh, and finish it um, next week um, in the workshop uh, but this is one of those mods where I'm not going to wait I'm going to continue the filming continue the filming so we have all of our wires now coming off of our various bits that we need in the box so we've got our neg feed from our battery we've got our pos feed from our battery we've got our two from our switch and we've got our two from our atty um, my up and down switches, uh, I'm going to wire very shortly, tiny little things, um, I'm going to wire those. What I'm thinking, uh, let me just move this out of the way, I'm going to get some power um, to the board. Um, and because I'm going for a, I was trying to work out how I'm, how I'm going to fix this, um, I'm going to position this, this display, hold on, come it down. Now I know some people are going to cringe at this, but I'm going to get this display in position. Um, I am going to epoxy that display in there. I'm going to set my little switches in for my ups and downs, and I'm going to epoxy that in as well. Um, I'm going to fill this area with epoxy. Um, what that will enable to me to do then, once my display is in, I'll feed this back over. And I'll be able to get all my fixed points on top, and then that will just slot down in the uh, in the box. Tis the plan. Um, being ever so careful with this ribbon, uh, but yes, this is this is next step, which is to uh, to go away and, and get my my display positioned. Um, I think that's going to be the hardest thing. I've got to get a I'm going to get a battery feed to it um, and position that up because I'm going to have to sort of epoxy it, position it. And I need to remember to take the film off before I do that. Um, but yeah, hold that in position while the uh, while the epoxy sets. And I'm going to be using the um, if you like the two-part metal epoxy for that. If I do get five to uh, to do this, I'll, I'll do that and I'll, I'll come back um, and show you the uh, the board in place. And then essentially, it's, it's going to be a few more mods on on the box, um, and I'll be wiring up. But I will be doing that today. Uh, but you won't see it till next week. Unfortunately, um, if I do get me epoxy and done, I'll come back and I'll show you. But uh, for now, back to me in the studio. 
and it is indeed back to me once again. Um, yes, as you can see, I have had much fun uh, with the wood this week, um, and Mark's had much fun with his tin. Um, good job there, uh, really good job from from Mark. Um, where where where's he going to go next week? We do not know. I know where I will most definitely be heading, and uh, I can give you a a brief overview of uh, of everything in place there. Um, in the mod itself, um, yet to be uh, sort of fixed in place. Um, it was one of those mods where, where normally I would, um, I would get the pun. I, I would uh, sort of put that to one side and uh, and and carry on um, with it next week. I I couldn't wait. So this week I did literally go through. Um, and I must say, uh, that particular mod, I sort of, I, I, I did my dry run last week, um, and, uh, you know, I knew my board was working, etc, etc. But essentially, that took me all day Saturday. Um, all day Saturday to, to film. I've, I've got next week's footage in the bag, bar probably five minutes that I need to, you know, lots of waffling next week. Um, but yes, it, it was one of those things where I... I got so excited about actually building the mod I wanted to take it that step further if you like um, after this I mean me and me and Mark have been we've been looking at, at various things um, that we want to make um, we would we'd like to have a go at the uh, what's that the, the little chip called with the display is it uh, over, 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 or something like that we would like to have a go at one of those um, I think potentially and um, that may well be coming soon because we are having talks. Um, so hopefully we will we'll have a, a couple of those to play with. Um, if you guys again want to see anything at all, um, made, modded, whatever, it doesn't really matter what it is. If you've got any more, yeah, you know, any more information you want on resistors, capacitors, switches, blah blah blah, let us know and uh, we'll bring or we'll do our best to, to bring it to you live. With all that said, guys, it has been emotional. I can't believe it has absolutely flown tonight. Despite all of the problems I've had earlier um, since 5 o'clock this evening, uh, I do believe it has gone without a hitch. So, without tempting fate, completely, I am going to bid you farewell. I will see you all here tomorrow for uh, Vapor Scene. So, guys, catch you tomorrow. Good night, and thanks for watching. Cheers now. Tip with Gary Dibley.